It's your boy Juby, and we back with a banger. You feel me? You know the vibes, man. First bed at 24, you know, leave 23 out the doubt. Simple. So, we got trends we should leave in 2023. So, we're gonna react to it and let's get crazy. Hit that button, like real talk. You trying to go crazy? 6K, let's get it. No, I'm back on. I decided to ask the audience and I'll basically read the comments and give my thoughts and if I agree or disagree. Now without further ado, let's hop right into it. The first person said, promising slash hyping fans up about new music, then never releasing it. I well, that's gonna happen every year, ain't gonna cap. I understand life happens. But if it's a continuous pattern, then it's a problem. Mm. And I agree. I've also seen some instances where artists get mad and then act like fans are entitled and are in the wrong. But it's like you've hyped them up. You've set that expectation. If the music isn't ready or you don't know, then don't give a date. Or time frame. It's facts. It's facts. It goes with everything, you feel me? Like when I make videos, I used to be like, I'm dropping woo the woo at 7 p.m. Then I'm like, damn, I'm not even ready for 7 p.m. Why did I even announce it? So nowadays, I don't even announce. I don't announce unless the thing is already on YouTube ready for me to press schedule, you feel me? Like, there's no point of typing people up and then they're ready and on time and it's not there. Like, that's just dumb, you feel me? Like, don't be don't be on black people timing. Let's be, let's be. Let's be for real. Because people will be disappointed if it doesn't come out. One person said, pressuring celebrities to speak on political topics to spread awareness. I'd rather have educated people who have taken interest in said topics for more than three days mm. to post facts and legitimate resources to further create any discussion of value than have a celebrity who probably hasn't even finished high school to post about serious matters just to get clout or out of fear of being canceled. Mm, that's true. That is true, you feel me? Like, they say if you don't post about it, then that means you don't care. Well, it's like, it makes no sense. You, whole time you probably do care, you just don't want to, like, you feel me? Like, post, not posting it don't mean you don't care, y'all. Like, I'm telling you. Remember, 50 years ago, we didn't have social media. They wasn't posting things. Does it mean they didn't care? No. So yeah, to me it was dumb. I think they were going after Drake or some other rappers about things of that nature and it wasn't right, you feel me? People have their own opinion. They don't want to share it. They don't have to. It's just life. I want celebrities to entertain me and politicians slash activists to educate me. Simple. That's it. I do agree that the kind of dog palling of celebrities to speak out about things on the internet is a bit egregious. And I feel like it's a damned if you do, damned if you won't scenario where you will never completely satisfy anyone on either side and there Facts. will always be someone mad on either side. Facts. But I will say there is a difference when a celebrity aligns their brand with activism, then people will come to expect activism from you and people will call you out if you're not consistent with it. And I think that's fair. Like, you can't just use activism when it's beneficial for you. And expect people not to take notice. But celebrities who just stay to themselves and aren't political should just be allowed to exist without people bothering them or dogpiling on them to speak about something they likely know nothing about. The next person said, songs without bridges. And I agree, I do feel like bridges are making a slight comeback. But in the era of TikTok and artists trying to game the streaming systems, I feel it's gonna be a long while before we see a full return of Bridges. Damn. The next person said, slow boring music dominating everything. And I feel like this is an L take because it implies that if something is slower, it's boring. And that's just not the case. And also for the last few years, we have experienced a disco and dance revival. So I'm not really sure where this whole slow songs dominating everything narrative is coming from. But even if that were the case, if the slow song is good, it deserves to dominate just as much as an up-tempo song does. Facts. Another person said, Chris Sean Rock and Blueface, please. And I agree. I please. Chris Sean and Blueface, don't bring your matters to 2024s. You feel me? Cardi B and Offset, stop with your fake beef in 2024. We gotta grow up. You feel me? Y'all people finna be 30 soon 
That's, or maybe I'm already 30. Come on, bro. If you guys are beefing, keep it on the lows. Or y'all just do it for bread, though. But at the same time, bro, do it on the low. Simple. Y'all just look goofy. I said this last year. Um, we should drop them off wherever we dropped off Takashi69 and never look back. Damn. Despicable couple. And neither one of them seem to be very good people. I'm just sad that they brought a child into it. Next, we have Beyonce versus Taylor. And I so agree. This year has been all about Renaissance and Eras Tour and their respective albums. And this is one stand beef and pop culture comparison that I haven't given much energy to because I find it to be so ridiculous. Beyonce and Taylor Swift are polar opposites. Mm. They are. Why? Because they're white and black. <laughs> And they are also in completely different stages of their careers. You don't go to Beyonce or Taylor expecting the same or even similar things. They also approach their artistry and performances very differently. But what I respect about the Beyonce and Taylor thing is that both of the artists at the center of the spectacle. So Acorns is a uh, financial tech company, so um, I, I, I bought uh, everyone's gifts today. Cool. ...are strong enough to not give in to the comparisons and the stand beef. They just stick together and they complement each other and they persist in spite of everything going on around them in the chaos. This would never happen with someone like Nicki and Cardi, for example. But Beyonce and Taylor are just a different class. Someone said BBLs. Now people will inevitably do what they want with their bodies. I will just say that I don't think young people, and yes that includes young adults as well, should be going under the knife so soon when they're not even done developing. Ooh. The next person said, lazy devil worship imagery. And I so agree. Now I want to clarify that music is a free art form and religion has shaped the world as we know it today. So inevitably religion will impact music in some form and some influence. And some of the best popular songs of all time have religious imagery or religious ties like Madonna's Like a Prayer or Princess Die For You. But like I said previously, I do think there is an uptick of artists who are using religious imagery, specifically satanic imagery, as rage bait at this point. It's not like they're saying anything interesting in their songs or music videos. It's just like, hey, look at me, I'm so shocking, ha ha ha, I'm a troll. But there's not anything else going on, there's nothing- I peep too though, I ain't gonna cap. It's like, they have it, they have the evil stuff, but they're not really evil for real. If you know, you know, like, it's like they promoting evil, but they're not really evil. But like, I want y'all to really comment on below. Like, you know, tell me how you feel about this. Cause I, I kind of, I kind of noticed that. Like, is is Lil Uzi satanic? Is Doja Cat satanic? Is Young Boy is he satanic? Like, we don't know. Like, I'm just asking. Y'all let me know. Being said in the song, Trippy Red. Song, the music's not good, and there's just so many artists using satanic imagery as a crutch for controversy and not delivering on all fronts. It's just a vanity project. Now, there's actually this comment left on one of my videos that I think about every time this topic is brought up, and I feel like it was so well put and so well written. And they say, I so agree with satanic imagery slash the implication of satanism being a cheap way to create discourse. Of course, when Christian extremists denounce anything, tons of people go to defend it or brag about liking it. It's the easiest punching bag of controversy to draw attention to your submissive and bold work. Air quotations. Honestly, I'd love to see an artist take religious motifs beyond ooh, haha, -ha, red devil horns and Illuminati and a pentagram so evil and actually tap into what Christian occult has to offer. And that about sums this topic up. Someone said, remixes that aren't really remixes and only add like one to two new verses to a song. Especially ones that hype up a famous featured artist just for them to be barely in it. Damn. And I agree, especially with the latter half of this comment. It's annoying when something is hyped up as a remix or a collaboration. And it this is a little, what's his name? Not a little, this is DDG. This is a little DDG that's ain't gonna cap and some other artists I ain't gonna mention. If you know, you know. Especially the sped up versions. I feel like this is all DDG. But it's in our logo. But there's other artists that do the same thing. I just can't think of it right now. But yeah, comment down below. And it's just like 20 seconds of the featured artist. And it's like, what's the point? Mm. I really do appreciate when artists put time into reworking a song. 
I feel like Lil Wayne, he put effort on his verses, but yeah. In making it sound like a true collaboration, even if it isn't drastically different from the original, just make it have some type of chemistry. And someone said sped up versions, and I'm somewhere in the middle with this. I don't really care about sped up versions, but I don't think it- Yes, for sped up versions, yeah, I'm, I don't care either. I'm never listening to a sped up version though. But like for TikTok, it, it works for it, so I'm not mad. Every single song in existence needs to be sped up, which TikTok loves to do, but it doesn't fit every song. Right. Someone said canceling celebrities just to forget about whatever scandal they were involved in a week later. The worst is when people cancel someone, do the absolute most, and drag their name through the dirt just to defend them a week later. And I agree to a certain extent. On one hand, celebrities aren't likely going to be canceled unless you do something just truly awful. Cancel culture, been done. I'm sorry. You are not getting canceled in 2024. Like, it's just not happening. That joint was a 2020 thing, 21 for show, but that joint died. Like, it's simple. There's no way your career is ending. Unless you're, um, that guy, what's his name? The guy in Creed, I forgot his name. He got a can I know for him, he's done. Like, he's, he's, he could find, he could rebound, but what happened, bro? Like, the people, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, anyone's side because I'm not trying to, you feel me, put my opinion on that. But I'm just saying, at the moment, he's done. But you could find a way to bounce back. Or you make a seriously bad career move. Most people are not going to be canceled, and that's just reality. Facts. And on the other hand, yes, people should be held accountable for the bad things that they do. But also, I just don't think it's realistic to hold something against someone for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Of course, I'm talking about petty beefs. Now, they're taking advantage of people or doing nefarious things to that nature. Then they should be behind bars. But if it's a little controversy, then people are allowed to grow, people are allowed to move on. Mm. Someone else said, songs that aim to go viral on social media. Like, you could definitely hear the hints and structure of songs that can easily be adapted to making content. And I agree, this is what I call the TikTok formula. It's so cringe, so annoying, and just devalues music. It's just so low effort. I feel like the first, uh, what's it called? The person that was actually trying to do that was Drake. Remember that song? Left foot, uh, left foot down, left foot up, right foot. Remember that song from 2020? Once I heard about that joint, I said, yup, this TikTok trend is gonna start soon. You feel me? Songs before that, I don't think they were really trying to aim at TikTok. Maybe they were. But like 2019, they had a nice era of TikTok songs, but they wasn't really trying to be TikTok songs, if that makes sense. But then Drake, he started at left foot up, right foot something, slides, juicy slide. And then I was like, yep, downhill. Someone said filming at gyms. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with filming at gyms. Filming yourself at gyms, I should say. A lot of people take progress pictures and videos of themselves at the gym. But obviously, filming other people and bothering them while they're minding their own business should not be allowed. At all. Someone said naming everything a core or aesthetic. Like, what do you mean you're a vanilla sweet bean and grass organic aesthetic? And I agree with this. It just gives like, you want to be a part of something. Like you were left out, you didn't get enough attention. So now you're just trying to make something up. Another person says, hating on every single new slash upcoming artist and calling everyone an industry plan. And I also agree with this. Obviously artists will be analyzed and their come ups will be analyzed. And some people's come ups may be untruthful and it will be, you know, called into question. But not every artist has faked their come up. Someone said throwing stuff at singers slash performers on stage <laughs> and agree. Now this is not a new phenomenon, of course. Things have been getting thrown on stage since forever. But this year there were a lot of harmful things being thrown on stage and it should not be allowed. Immediately get kicked out. Sure. Act like you For have sure. some sense or don't come at all. Someone else said sampling classic beloved songs to create an unoriginal pop song. Sampling has been a part of popular music for ages i.e. Crazy in Love has samples in it. However, using very recognizable sections of classic songs to create lazy pop music is tacky. I'm looking at you, David Guetta, and agree, agree, agree. So this is a death at David, but 
Yeah, sampling was definitely popular in 23, though. You, I can't even lie. Like, hella, like, ride wave for show. Sure. Signals, they killing me. I don't know what you are, but I know.